Hi everybody, let's in this video have a look at how changes to demand and supply will affect equilibrium in a market. I've drawn four diagrams here. All I'm going to do is take isolated shifts of demand and supply. Shifting demand right, supply right, demand left, and then supply left. And having a look and seeing what happens to price and quantity when that change occurs. Very important you can do this confidently. Let's start with a demand shift to the right. So here we are at equilibrium. Demand shift to the right. Let's draw it like that. New equilibrium is where D2 cuts S1. That gives us an increase in quantity from Q1 to Q2 and also an increase in price from P1 to P2. Remember all the reasons why this could happen. Your Pacific factors. So maybe it's an increase in population. Maybe it's good advertising, successful advertising campaign. Uh, maybe it's an increase in the price of a substitute. Uh, maybe it's an increase in income, assuming that this good is a normal good, a change in fashion and tastes towards this good, maybe it's a reduction in interest rates if this good requires borrowing money in order to purchase it potentially, uh, and maybe it's a reduction in the price of a complementary good. Um, all of these reasons can shift demand to the right, so your confidence with Pacific and all the factors that can affect demand is important as well. Uh, so simple there. What about a supply shift to the right? Well a supply shift to the right is as simple as that from S1 to S2. If we show the new equilibrium, again, there's an increase in quantity, but now a reduction in price from P1 to P2. A good idea is always to draw arrows, just to let the reader know um, exactly what's happening to price and quantity. So whenever we shift the supply curve, remember generally, we think, ah, costs of production. If supply is shifting right, we think, oh, there might be a falling cost of production. Then we think Pints WC, a lot of those are specific reasons why costs of production can change. So if we go through Pints WC, Maybe it's an increase in labour productivity, maybe it's a removal of an indirect tax or a reduction in an indirect tax. An increase in the number of firms, an improvement in technology, maybe it's a subsidy granted or an increase in the size of the subsidy that's granted. Maybe it's good weather, maybe it's generally the cheap, right? A fall in costs of production, maybe a fall in transport costs, a fall in labour costs, reduction in regulations, whatever. Uh, will shift supply to the right like that and that's the impact on price and quantity. Now we'll go demand left and supply left. So if we go demand left, or we'll simply shift it from D1 to D2 to the left. Now we're going to see a reduction in quantity and also a reduction in price. And supply shifting left, there it is from S1 to S2, and we can show an increase in price and a decrease in quantity. So all very basic shifts, isolated shifts of demand and supply, and we can see the final impact on price and quantity. Very important to do this basic analysis, but maybe more interesting in your head right now is why and how? Why did prices change as we've shown here? Why did quantities change as we've shown here? And how? Well, the reason is the market mechanism. Remember the four functions of the price mechanism as we learned in my previous video. Ah, see, we are now going to understand in much more detail how this happens. How does the market reallocate resources? Let's have a look at that.